the first question in a semiconductor uh, which of the following statement is correct or are correct there are no free electrons at zero kelvin yes the statement is correct there is no free electrons at any of the temperature no the statement is wrong because there are few electrons at room temperature that's why it slightly conduct at room temperature but not as a good conductor actually it acts as a bad conductor at room temperature so in the next option the number of free electrons increases with temperature obviously that's how uh, your thermometer works digital thermometer and uh, the number of free electrons is less than that in the conductor obviously the semiconductor is not a very good conductor at room temperature so it uh, has less number of free electrons than that of conductor and so in this there is a c and d are the correct option b is wrong in the next question there is a pn junction with open ends and we have to find again the correct statements a there is no systematic motion of charge carriers no obviously there is a very systematic motion electrons equal number of electrons moves from uh, inside to b side and equal number of holes moves from p to n side as there is no current that is flowing no net current that is flowing when the junction is open so the number of electrons and holes transferring must be equal so there is no net charge transfer between the two sides obviously the statement is correct there is a constant electric field near the junction again this statement is also correct that state uh, that electric field near the junction is very strong but uh, it is constant in that region in the next question in a pn junction new holes and conduction electrons are produced continuously throughout the material yes this is correct because because uh, by gaining some thermal energy from the surrounding uh, bond may break or due to fast moving electrons or uh, holes generally because of fast moving electrons when they hit a bond they may also break the bond so throughout the material the process is taking place so electrons and holes are produced throughout the material so the second statement is correct uh, is wrong even in the depletion region uh, fast moving electrons broke the bond and that is why a breakdown occurs one type of breakdown okay uh, in the option c the conduction electrons recombine continuously throughout the material uh, that is a tricky part uh, they recombine and form bonds throughout the material except the region of depletion layer because due to very strong field okay, I am explaining due to thermal energy and due to collision the fast moving electrons bonds are being broken throughout the material so electrons and holes are being produced but in the depletion region there is a very strong electric field and these newly produced electron and holes don't have any time to recombine this strong electric field just drift them again to opposite side to n comma p side electrons to the n side and holes to the p side so it will not allow any recombination so recombination doesn't take place in the uh, depletion region in the next question the impurity atoms which should uh, be added with pure silicon so to make it a p-type semiconductor so for doping we can say if we have to uh, form a p-type semiconductor then it should be a trivalent and for good doping the size should be similar to the size of uh, the atoms of uh, silicon atoms so we have boron as well as any aluminium both are trivalent and the size is quite similar to the size of silicon so in the next question 
the electrical conductivity of a pure germanium can be increased by increasing the temperature obviously yes by doping acceptors impurities yes by doping some uh, donor impurities obviously yes by irradiating ultraviolet light obviously by radiating ultraviolet light some of the bonds may be broken and uh, due to that a number of electrons and holes conduction electrons and holes will be produced that will obviously increase the conductivity of the semiconductor in the next question a semiconducting a semiconductor device is connected in series with a battery and a resistance a current is found to pass through the circuit if the polarity of battery is reversed the current drops almost to zero these are the characteristics of a diode so the device may be obviously should be a pn junction it should not be an intrinsic intrinsic semiconductor because uh, the intrinsic semiconductor will provide same resistance no matter how it is connected again a p type semiconductor will act as a conductor no matter how it is connected similarly for n type semiconductor it will also act as a good conductor no matter how it is connected the only thing that will have infinite resistance from one polarity and a small resistance from other polarity is a diode which is p injection in the next question a semiconductor is doped with a donor impurity so out of these four options we have to choose the correct one the whole concentration increases or it decreases what about the concentration of electrons as we know the donor impurity is uh, uh, basically a pentavalent which have excess electrons or uh, an electron uh, it has five electrons and one electron will be jumping to the conduction band so obviously obviously the number of conduction electrons will increase so option c and because of that the number of holes will decrease because now excess concentration of free electrons will be able to form bonds with few of the holes so their concentration will decrease and the concentration of holes will uh, electrons will increase and concentration of holes will decrease so b and c should be the correct option in the next question let ie ic ib represent the emitter collector and base currents respectively then we have to find which is more or which is less so ic obviously ie is the greatest has the greatest value ic is almost 95 percent of ie and ib is the remaining five percent of ie so ic is slightly smaller than ie is a valid statement ic is slightly greater than no it is not greater than ie so p is wrong ip is much smaller than ie yes it is less than five percent of ie so it has to be much smaller than ie c is also correct ip is much greater than ie which is a wrong statement so we are left with only two correct statement which is a and c in the normal operation of a transistor i've already told you that base emitter junction is forward biased and the collector base junction is reverse biased okay in the normal operation when it is acting like a uh, amplifier so in switch the conditions are different so a and b base emitter forward base collector reverse the next question an and gate can be prepared by a repetitive use of um, nand and nor both are universal gates and uh, by repetition of them any gates can be produced so by way repeating NAND or NOR we can get the AND gate 